Welcome to Jenkins Boatworks. Chuck Jenkins here with another episode in Building the Haven. Well, I still am intent on working on the combings and trying to figure out the pattern, but this quarter inch plywood is just a little too thick for me to be able to bend it around the carlin. After I cut out a 12 inch piece, I thought, well, I'm going to have to do something different. I've got some thin pieces of uh, cedar, almost veneer-like, that uh, I'm gluing up that I think I can use to try to make my pattern. So in the meantime, I thought, well, why not go ahead and try to get a seat pattern? So this is about 88 inches. I cut it long the first time. It's still just a teeny bit long, I think. But anyway, I'm going to have to do uh, a little bit of spiling in order to uh, figure out what my seat pattern is going to look like. My mahogany for the seats is here. I've had it for a little while. And I think I'm going to have to glue edge to edge these, these planks. I've got four of them, but I don't think any of them is wide, wide enough. So anyway, I'm going to... Um, well, I'm going to put the camera up on one of these posts and then I'll uh, make some spiling marks on this so I can maybe get an idea of what my pattern should look like. Okay, so, so I've got it in here now and if anybody is interested, it's 88 inches right on the nose. And I measured it before and then I was like, I better cut a little longer and I want 88 and 3 quarters and then I came down to 88 and 1 16th, it's 88. 88 right on the nose. Now, I don't know if that's if everybody's boat would be that, but I think I was pretty close on setting up the frame, so, well, anyway. I cut a little curve out of here so that, so that this would sit down in here and not rub up against the, the hull, and I'm just sticking out from the, the seat frame, the cleat, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little stick, this little, just little piece of cedar that I got, and there's just got tons of this kind of stuff laying around, and at each station, I'm going to mark where I'm at. The idea here is that I should be able to get the curve of the hull for my back my back edge of the seat. I thought about just setting it on the rail and then just drawing a pencil line underneath it up here, but I'm afraid that the hull is just different down here as compared to up here. It'd probably get you close, and so that would probably be a way to do it, but at least now I've got these some spiling marks all the way up here. Let's put one up here and even here. Boy, that's got an awful lot of sweep to it. Okay, well then I'm just going to connect the dots and cut that out. And it should fit back up in here pretty good. Um, but that's why I'm going to have to, that's why I'm going to have to piece together a couple of pieces of wood to make the seat. Because you're, you're talking about something that would be probably 15, 14, 15 inches to, to, to achieve... Um, to be able to cut it out of one piece, I, that'd be a, an expensive piece of wood. I think I can side join two pieces and get them uh, glued together good enough that you won't even hardly be able to see the seam. So, all right. Okay, so I got a little bit of ADD. Um, you can see that I've got these little thin pieces of cedar that I glued together, uh, clamped on the uh, 
the shear clamp and on the carlin here to kind of look like what's going to be the, the combing. Um, but I'm still working on the seat. So I had made my marks on this plywood and I cut it all out. And uh, it fits in there pretty good. Uh, it's at least good enough for a rough pattern. And then looking at the plan, it looks like the, the seat should be about 11 inches wide throughout. So, where's my tape? Right there. So, the way this worked out with this piece is like right here, we're already right almost 11 inches right there. So, that was probably okay. But obviously it's narrower on both ends. So I was like, well, I wonder, I wonder how I'm going to make the rest of the pattern. And then I was like, well, I have this exact curve from the piece of plywood that I cut off of there. And it came off in one piece. So I'm thinking to myself, self, put that in there and just see what it looks like. And that straight edge matches up pretty close to there, notwithstanding how I cut it off earlier when I was cutting off a 12 inch section. And now, yeah, yeah, that's, that can work. Okay, it's obviously too wide up here, and it's probably not quite wide enough back there, but it's really close. So I think what I'm going to do, I've got these little battens, I'm going to take these and um, just run some little screws through. And hold these pieces together like that and uh, maybe take some poster board and add a little bit up on this part but not too much that's already that's 12 inches so that's about right that's in fact I don't think I want it any more than that and up here this is gonna have to come off this is this is too fat I don't know well that's 11 and a half. It's too much here. I have to bring it back to the to the uh, edge of the of the seat cleat. But uh, nobody can sit under here anyway. That's gonna work. I think I've almost got my pattern for the seats. Man, I hope I can flip it over and it'll just fit in the other side. Wouldn't that be sweet? All right. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my seat pattern. Um, we're about 12 inches there, 12 inches wide in the middle, and it goes up to about 10 up at the front end. So I think we're going to be okay with that. Um, but now I've got issues. This is the mahogany that I've had for some time, and I knew that it was warped a little bit when I bought it, but it was wide, so I kind of liked it. But I don't know if you can see. Yeah, see that big bend in it up there? That's not good. It's not going to lay flat. And this other one underneath, it's okay. And then I've got some over uh, over here laying on the table saw that's got issues too. Um, you look on the end here. You can see that it's bent. It's actually got a little check in the end there and um, the edges aren't straight. On some of these boards they're off as much as a, an inch in width from one end to the other so what I'm doing with this one is I cut a piece of the end off of an eight foot sheet of plywood and I know that the edge that's that's closest to us here is that's a factory cut edge that's straight so what I did is I've put a couple of little screws in here on both ends and then I should be able to run this edge next to the fence on the table saw and effectively get the edge straight on the opposite side. Uh, and then once that edge is straight I should be able to run it against the fence to we'll take the take the plywood off and uh, then get a straight edge there and then hopefully we have uniform widths. Uh, that's not going to do anything to help the, the warping. I may just be going to buy some more lumber but um, 
The combings call for half inch thick boards. So part of what I may be able to do is use some of this wood for the combing and um, run it through the thickness planer, get it down to a half inch, and then try to fashion it after this pattern that I'm making for the combing. And since it's already got some bend to it and I'm going to bend it more anyway, uh, it could work out fine. Maybe I don't care. Okay, so I ran it through there at seven inches and uh, took the piece of plywood I was using as a guide off. You can see that little tiny screw hole here in the end where it was. And now I've measured it and it's almost right. But you can see right up at the end there, there's just a little wiggle. It's not quite straight. Um, I'm going to adjust the fence now back down to six and three quarters. And um, my flat edge is, is on the right side over here. So we're going to run that against the fence and then just take off whatever imperfection there is on this left side. And then we should have a pretty straight board by then. Um, it's got a little bit of warp in it too. I don't know what we're going to do about that. This may wind up being sheer clamp or combing as well. We'll see. Well, I really do feel like I've got ADD. Um, but part of this is because of the lumber that I've got, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best use of it. Um, so I'm back to working on the combing, and I had glued together these very thin veneers. They're just leftover veneers from when I cold molded, and a uh, couple things that I'm noticing. Uh, first of all, I can butt block this combing right here because it shows that it, Frame 13 is about where the orlocks go. So you're going to have a piece that's a, a uh, extra support piece on the combing for the, for the orlocks. So it's just a perfect place to do that butt joint. Now, I'm long here. I'm past 13. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so I basically just glued together these pieces of cedar and then you can see here I'm even using some poster board now I'm not quite right down on the deck there I don't know if you can see that but there's a gap at the bottom there so I'm just gonna tape more poster board on there and part of the trick of this is letting it flow at the angle that it wants to flow at and it does have you know it comes up to a point and and comes at an angle from the deck up going forward. So I'm just trying to make my pattern. And see, part of the trick is you've got to get it cut out down there where it comes up at the foredeck. And then that bottom part attaches onto that combing and then back onto the, uh, the shear clamp. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.